Hello, Average Engineers. Today, I want to talk about an interesting topic that a reader asked me recently about, asked, some, asked for some input on and kind of how I do things. And so I wrote a Substack article called Developing Production Databricks Pipelines, a Study and Development Workflows. Again, that's Developing Production Level Databricks Pipelines. And because of some of the stuff I've previously written and stuff people know already about like using notebooks in production is not a good idea and it just leads to bad behaviors. And I've seen that firsthand. I've actually had readers reach out to me and ask me questions about that. This is a question for one of my readers of my newsletter. They sent this in saying, however, I was wondering how you are developing Pi files for Databricks, probably locally from what I've read online, Databricks extensions and Databricks Connect both come with necessary limitations. Can you maybe do a newsletter about how you develop production code base with Databricks? What are the limitations, et cetera? Basically, how do I develop production, good engineering level Databricks pipelines? What do I need to do basically? And of course, recently I've talked about, and you can go check out that video about me bashing some product manager at Databricks for saying you should use notebooks for all your sole development, which is a terrible idea and horrible. Don't do that. And we're going to talk about what's the better way. First, we kind of have to talk about development life cycles. Uh, what does it look like to have a good development life cycle for developers? Say you're a data engineer working on Databricks. You're, that's your job is develop pipelines. And even if you're just writing software, what should a development cycle look like for someone? At a high level, this is what it should look like. You should start with local development of code. You should always be able to end an IDE, probably with Docker something well, something else on your machine. As a developer, you should be able to code locally. So that doesn't necessarily mean a notebook in Databricks, for example. It means you need to have a way to develop your code locally and start unit testing that stuff locally. You need to have CI CD attached to that so your unit tests can run on your machine as well as when you push your code up to repositories that those different checks and unit tests run. And you also probably need to have an integration and development system that mirrors production somewhere where you can test your code. So basically step one is like implementation, your coding developers start coding components based on design specifications. And then they start unit testing each piece of that code locally on their machine. And then once that's done, right, your code is written locally, you can unit test it. You've kind of done all the work without using up resources just on your machine without the internet. And then the next step is kind of like the integration and testing where maybe you push it out all that code somewhere to a development wire that sort of mirrors production that you'll be able to run it in a more, you know, this is a production like environment with production like data. I'm running it somewhere that's not production and testing it is obviously very important. Then obviously the deployment piece is the next important piece. So you need to be able to have automated systems that can package and deploy that code to production to where it needs to go. So you're not just copy and pasting stuff into notebooks or something. And remember the goal of a good development work cycle is to have less bugs overall, is to have a healthy and happy teams and is to be able to iterate and develop features quickly. And to do that, you need to be able to write code locally and trust it and be able to write small pieces of logic that you can unit test that other people can pull in and test and push out and just have basically do a normal software development workflow for your Databricks pipelines. So a day in the life of a Databricks data engineer, what would it look like? So you would write code in an IDD, you would unit test it at the same time, you would have a Docker environment with Delta Lake and Spark that you can then write all that code and test it and run your test locally on your machine. Once you've done your work and everything's passes and you say this looks like a good pipeline, I'm done here, I've written my nice reusable unit testable code and I've written unit test, I've run everything locally here. I've unit tested all my Spark transformations, including my Delta Lake merge statements and SQL statements. All that stuff's passed locally and unit tested. I can now push it off, usually via CI, CD, or maybe Bashful. I can basically take that code and take everything, that package I just wrote, and push it out to an development environment that mirrors production, that can run, and it's yet another check that, hey, this thing works in a production-like environment. And of course, once that is passed, then you can have your CDI CD deploy that packaged and tested code, both that worked locally and out in a development environment. It can be pushed out to production. So specifically, what does that mean for local development for Databricks people? It means you're going to have to have a Docker file that has two major things, 
Apache Spark and Delta Lake probably, and you're going to need Docker Compose to go along with that to be able to kind of run your unit test. So Docker files with Spark, with Delta Lake, both open source, with Docker Compose, those things will give you the perfect local development environment to be able to write your Databricks pipelines without having to be inside Databricks doing it in a notebook, for example. And again, remember you want to do this because it's a quick feedback cycle and it's a better way to develop code. This is how most software engineers develop code. They write methods and functions that are small, reusable and unit testable, and then they actually test those things locally. So again, clone the repo, add some or add some new feature or utility file. You know, you're adding code, you write the unit test for that code, you run it locally, it passes all your tests and then you deploy to dev. Again, I'll show example here as of just an example Docker file that's really not that hard. It's just an Ubuntu Docker file that pip installs Python and then some other packages. And obviously it adds Apache Spark. You can obviously change the version, whatever you want. And as well, you get Delta Lake in there. I won't go into much detail here, but you need, if you're using something like PyTest, you can use a conftest.py file to set up a Spark session fixture for which you can now start to be able to unit test both Spark functions and Delta Lake methods. Again, here's this example of using that Spark session fixture and being able to test Spark and write a unit test for Spark, including, you can see here, we can do Delta Lake things and test them, right? We can create Delta Lake tables and we can insert data into those tables and just basically write any sort of test for any sort of transformation. It's not that hard and this is all done locally and you get feedback immediately. Of course you need Docker Compose and what's a Docker Compose do that basically helps you tie things together. If you have other Docker files and images or Postgres tied to it and you want to do other things, Docker Compose is a great way just to automate the running of certain things like unit tests. We can say, you know, write a service called test. We can write Docker Compose up test and it automatically builds our image and runs our unit test against, you know, whatever's in that Docker file, probably your you know, repo, whatever you've just been working on, right? Um, especially if the volumes are tied, if you need to learn a little Docker and Docker Compose, do that, but it's a super quick and easy way to run unit tests locally. Of course, the next thing, once we move on from the local is gonna be like a development environment. And this is basically where a lot of data teams, you know, if they do the first step, they kind of fall flat on the next step. A lot of data teams do not have a production-like environment that is not production, that is development and it mirrors production. And it's somewhere they can deploy the code that they've now written and tested and passes. They can deploy into a production-like environment that's called development, and they can run those pipelines. This is extremely important for data engineers and people working on data teams to make architecture that includes both a production and development environment. It's key to not letting bugs slip into production. Of course, there's a lot of things that go on with this. Of course, your code base needs to be able to be know the difference between dev and production. But again, that's just general good engineering. If your code base doesn't do that, you should move that way. And if you're unfamiliar with life cycles of having production and development, that just says you need to do a little bit of work in that area. You need to learn some stuff which probably includes learning some CI CD and some bash for example uh, to be able to for example in my work environment we have some bash files that can you just run a single bash file and what it does is it just packages up all the code and it pushes that out to s3 bucket where it becomes available for ingestion into the dev environment so you can just go into your dev environment click run it'll run the code that you just wrote and unit tested locally and pass say hey, run this bash file, deploy my whatever I've been working on out to dev, and I'm gonna go to dev and run my pipeline and see if it works. This is not as hard as it sounds. It's just a little bit of bash, a little bit of work in setting up a dev environment. Um, yeah, it's really not that difficult and it'll save you a lot of time. I just wanna remind people that are De Databricks developers that, you know, of course, Databricks wants to dangle carrots in front of you. They have things like all purpose clusters and notebooks, which makes it very tempting to go out and just write all your code in a notebook and never have a good local development workflow. I really don't think this is a good idea. It spends a lot of money. They're trying to get you to use your, their tools, which is fine. The notebooks are great, great for R&D and great for certain types of development that you're doing. But remember that you need to be following good engineering principles. You need to be able to run the Delta Lake and Spark locally and have a normal local development environment where you can develop and push out to dev and test and then prod. Again, 
people have asked about Databricks Connect. Just remember, it allows Databricks Connects allows you to connect popular IDEs such as Visual Studio Code, PyCharm, IntelliJ, whatever, to notebook servers and be able to run your code again. I don't think this is a great idea. I've written about Databricks Connect before. You're spending money. You're using a all-purpose cluster. You're connecting to it and running your code on, you know, stuff that costs money, which again, I think if you're following a good development work cycle, you should be writing your unit tests locally, making sure everything passes. You don't really need to have to run that code all the time on a cluster, either through Databricks Connect or through using a notebook and spending all that money and all that time. And then basically you imbibe those bad habits that developing notebooks all the time has, like not writing your unit tests, things like that. You're probably not going to do that in a notebook environment. It's going to, you're going to get hooked on that and it's a bad idea. It's a great tool for when you need it, but it's not necessarily part of your core development lifecycle. Remember, spending time up front to build up an architecture where you have development environment, where you have Dockerfile with Spark and Delta Lake and all that stuff up front basically is going to be far more efficient. And you're going to ship way less bugs because you have a normal software engineering development lifecycle. Again, so it's totally possible as a Databricks developer to have a great hardened software engineering development lifecycle locally with things like Docker Compose and Docker and installing things like Delta Lake and Spark, which are open source, as well as just investing in a little CI CD so you can deploy things easily and having a development environment that mirrors prod. Let me know what you think.